Are you tired of grease splatter getting all over your kitchen? Does it discourage you from cooking because no matter what you do, you always have hot grease flying right at you and turning your kitchen into a mess? In this video, we'll talk about what causes splatter and ways to avoid it so you can have a much better experience in the kitchen. Let's dive in. Okay, let's start off by talking about what exactly is splatter. Splatter is basically when a sauce, or more commonly oil, is propelled outside of your pan. Usually the propellant is water. A lot of people mistaken the propellant for being oil, but the oil is what's being propelled outside of your pan. And like I said, it can be oil or it can even be a sauce, but commonly splatter is referred to as grease splatter. So why would you want to avoid splatter? Well, if it's not obvious, there's a couple of big reasons. The first one is for sanitation reasons. You don't want a lot of grease splatter in your kitchen. That's gonna bring insects, rodents, or just in general be a really disgusting environment. The second's for safety reasons. With grease splatter, you're literally having grease that's building up. And with super sauces, you're having food that's building up that can bring insects or you know, other unwanted pests or animals into your kitchen. So it really does tie back to sanitation and safety. I'll give you an example. If you have a wall that's constantly getting grease splatter, that grease is just building up on that wall and it's literally a ticking time bomb. Any little spark or accidentally igniting that wall on fire will cause a very large fire and most likely put you in a very dangerous situation where you're gonna need the fire department. So it's really important to avoid splatter in all forms for sanitation and safety reasons. So how do you avoid splatter? Well, the biggest thing that causes splatter is actually water or moisture. So if you kind of eliminate that and ensure that your food is properly patted dry before putting it into the pan, it's gonna go a long way. Not to mention if you're trying to sear, it aids in searing. Patting down your food, the meats, the proteins, even the vegetables before placing them in the pan will also aid in searing and minimize splatter. Something that kind of gets overlooked by beginners or new cooks is salt. Salt actually brings out moisture, brings out water. A common experiment that's usually performed with new cooks is when you grab some zucchini or maybe some squash or some other form of vegetables and you wash them and completely dry them, put them on your cutting board. A lot of cooks will then season the vegetables or the meat or whatever it may be with salt and they'll completely forget about the fact that salt is bringing out that moisture and then they just toss it into the pan. Well, that food, that food that you just seasoned with salt is actually wet now and it's gonna cause a lot of splatter. So it's very important that you remember to pat your food dry no matter what, right before you're gonna put it into the pan, the instant before you're gonna put it into the pan and you should be good to go. If you're seasoning with salt, always double check what you're trying to put into the pan. But usually if you just pat it dry before placing it in the pan, you'll be okay. The next biggest thing you gotta look out for is watching your temperatures and your oil to pan to food ratio. Having too much oil in your pan and having a large cut of meat or a really small cut of meat that's not really equivalent to the ratio that you need is gonna cause splatter. It's unnecessary, it's excessive. And likewise, if you're overheating your pan, overheating your oil, and then putting in a cold piece of meat or something else, that moisture is coming up to the top rapidly, and that's also gonna cause splatter. If you're getting soup splatter or sauce splatter, that's literally controlled by just turning down the temperature. Grease splatter is usually the one that's more out of control, but if you're seeing splatter caused by a sauce, there's usually two common reasons. One, the temperature is way too high and you're not simmering anymore. Now you're still, you know, bringing it up to a rapid boil. Or two, you put way too much liquid and you're at the rim. There's nothing you can do in that situation. You're gonna have to take some out. But if you have plenty of space remaining and you're just seeing a lot of splatter due to it being aggressively boiling, turning down the temperature and letting it simmer at a low and slow temperature usually takes care of that. Another good piece of advice is to use the lids that came with your pan. Now there's a caveat. There's a reason why your pans came with lids. The lid actually greatly aids in cooking, but it's usually to bring the temperature up of whatever it is that you're cooking internally and evenly. Now there's a big problem with lids. When you do use them, they tend to steam the food that's being cooked inside of the pan. And that may bring unwanted results. 
So I'll give you an example. If you're trying to sear, you don't want to put the lid on your pan. It's going to steam everything and you're not going to get a good sear. Know when to use the lid on your pan. It's a great accessory, but figuring out that ratio of, hey, are you trying to just, you know, finish cooking something off or are you trying to sear and you don't necessarily want to steam the food that's in there? It's really up to you in the circumstances. So ultimately, a lid is not necessarily used to prevent splatter. It's really to bring up the temperature of whatever it is that you're trying to cook in an even matter, but it tends to dry things out. Okay, if you want something to specifically address splatter, I highly recommend you invest in a splatter guard. They're commonly known as splatter screens or splatter guards. They have many different terms, but this is a tool that's relatively cheap and it's designed to specifically address splatter. And it's really handy, but it does have its pros and cons. They actually work really, really well. And in this example, I'm gonna demonstrate using water as the propellant to cause splatter on purpose. And then I'm gonna put the splatter shield or the splatter guard on top to show you guys how well they work. They work really, really well, and they're a great investment. The pros are they're light, they're cheap, they work well, and usually it's a quick thing that you can grab and use just like a lid. The con is they're really hard to clean, especially if you're trying to clean them by hand. But you can try to mitigate the cleaning issue by buying one that's completely flat. Not only is it gonna aid in storage if you decide to hang it because it'll be flat to the wall, but if you wanna use your dishwasher, it's flat, it won't get in the way. You can easily put it in your dishwasher and clean it. There's a lot of splatter guards out there that have like a handle that kind of extends out or bends out at a different angle. And I find them just really hard to maneuver and deal with. So I really do like and recommend the flat ones. But really investing in a splatter guard or a splatter shield can help you in those moments where you made a mistake or you forgot to pat down the food dry or whatever. And it does really prevent and knock out potentially having something that you really got to deep clean later on. I like the one that I have, so I'll put a link below so you can purchase it for yourself. Okay, now there's one more thing I have to mention. This is a general safety note. Anytime you're working in the kitchen, anytime you're working with grease, make sure you have safety items in place to help you in case the situation gets out of hand. And it's a good idea to invest in the correct fire extinguisher. Now, when you're dealing with grease, not every single fire extinguisher is gonna have the ability to knock that out. In the United States, over here, you wanna buy a class B fire extinguisher. A class B fire extinguisher is specifically made for grease. I don't know every single country's, you know, labeling or classes for the fire extinguisher, so just make sure you research it on your own, but always have one handy that's close by just in case the situation gets out of hand. And likewise, never ever add water to a grease fire. It's only gonna make the situation worse. I know our instincts when seeing a large flame or fire is to add water, but that's not the case in a grease fire. Adding water is just gonna accelerate things and most likely your small grease fire that could have been put out by you know, adding a lid or turning off the stove or, you know, something very simple has now escalated into a situation where you need the fire department or you need that fire extinguisher. So never put out a grease fire with water and invest in a class B fire extinguisher. But that's basically it. I hope I gave you guys a good overview on splatter, why it's so important to control it and ways to prevent it. If I forgot something or you have specific questions you'd like me to answer, please leave me a comment below and I'll try my best. Or if you have specific ways that you prevent splatter, let us know in the comments below. That's it for me guys. I hope you found this video informative. Check out some of my other videos and I will catch you on the next one. Take care everybody.